Hey everyone, you have seen these before in lectures that I and Howard and other people have given. Uh, you've definitely seen them in my slides at RTA trainings at Red Team Alliance. The valuable stuff that you find inside of a lockbox like this on a building if you're trying to break in on a pen test. Uh, speaking of Red Team Alliance, this looks gorgeous today, doesn't it? Because we are not at my kitchen table. We're at the Red Team Alliance recording studio in our new facility. So don't worry, future weeks, I will be back to your regularly scheduled potato vision. But in the meantime, let's talk about other things that are sometimes crappy and sometimes wonderful. Specifically, the key to operate these boxes. No, this is not the key that ships with the box. As you may be aware, uh, you can order these to comply with various codes in various jurisdictions. And what's the most typical key you see on elevator and first responder systems? Well, that's the FEOK1 key. And that's what we have here. We've got an FEOK1 ordered from the internet, fresh off the press from eBay, or I think this was actually Amazon. There's loads of sellers offering these now, uh, doing no small part to lectures that I and my friends have given. But let's go ahead and see what's inside this box. It's gotta be good, right? All right, this is a very common occurrence. These keys, Supposedly the most widespread, commonly available key, simple to get, are crap a lot of the time. And it's not because they're cut to like the wrong bidding. They're cut to the right bidding, just the wrong way. All right, so now here's another FEOK one from a different vendor, uh, a good quality vendor, in fact. And you can, you can see these sure look like the same key as I, as I go around. It looks like the same bidding. Well, how come this key works instantly? Well, that's because this key was made by somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. What is going on with the problems with a bad key, a good key, the right key, the wrong key, the bidding? It's because tubular land is confusing. There's a lot of history, and if you understand the history, it makes sense. But the problem remains that a lot of keys out in the world, as you're seeing, are not cut correctly according to the bidding you're trying to achieve. So let's start off. What is the FEOK1 bidding? This is no secret. I've talked about how it's published in code documents. Quote, 6143521. That's the key bidding for the FEOK1. If we look around, we've got, you know, what looks like 6143521. I mean, that, sh that sure looks like a normal bidding, right? It looks like the same kind of bidding that we had here on the key that worked. What's happening, though, is that you're running into problems with ACE standard, and fort or gem standard, as it's called. Let me throw a little chart on the, on, the, on the screen for you here. So the original tubular keys, the original tubular locks, the Chicago lock system, as it was called, right? Chicago lock company made the ACE lock. And that ACE lock had bitting values that could be expressed from one through eight, from very shallow cut to very deep cut. And that was the standard for a very long time. But Chicago Lock Company is gone. They've been absorbed into Compex. Now we have the Fort Lock Company making the GEM product line. So GEM is a series of tubular keys that became very, very popular once tubular key duplication was more widespread. They use the exact same bidding depth. They have the same values of cut, but they number them zero through seven. It's the, you can see it on the chart here. Same exact depths, just called something different. And what you run into very frequently now are people who don't know what they're doing, thinking that they're cutting a tubular key correctly. They've got some numbers. Let me punch them into my cutter and make that, make that bidding. They're cutting maybe ace depths when they should be trying to cut fort depths or vice versa. Let's go ahead and look at the, the FEOK1 key, which is those values are gem. Those are fort lock gem values. How would that be measured? All right. The first bidding cut is six. It goes six, one, four. Let's, let's also have the fun of the fact that is it going to be expressing those values clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, that gets into whether you mean clockwise according to the lock or clockwise according to the key. That is also a difference in the standard. So the original lock, right, the original tubular lock was made by who? It was made by Chicago Lock Company. They make what? They make locks. So how do you think they're going to arrange their bidding values? They care about looking at the lock and going around clockwise. But then along came GEM, and GEM is a brand of what? It's a brand of keys. So what does GEM care about? They say, well, if you look at our key, yeah, you gotta go clockwise right around the front face. So it becomes backwards. We run into this all the time, especially with the, with the FEOK1, where you'll actually see FEOK1 cut in reverse, so popular in fact that major industry sites will sometimes sell the quote counterclockwise key. It's just, 
it's the bidding in the wrong order. Let's look at the bitting in the right order and measured with the correct gauge. This is, if you're ever curious, you know, I like to make the, in our Red Team Tools version, we just say Fort Lock Scale right on there. Uh, we color it blue to make an homage to the, what was called the Lego brick that A1 manufacturing used to include in their hurdy-gurdy. So theirs was a blue brick with the zero through seven, hence ours. Let's check out this correct and working FEOK1, which should be 614 da 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 all right, on our Fort Lock scale tubular decoder, this first cut on the tubular key should be a six, right? Well, that sure looks like a six to me. That is nice and flush. It doesn't weeble wobble all around. How about our dog crap Amazon key? If we try a six, do y'all see that? That is not flush. That is not correct. This is actually officially cut to only a five depth, but of course, if we were to use a one through eight ace lock scale, as this locksmith or dude in his garage or whatever the heck he is probably did, you try that on there, you go, oh yeah, that's, that's definitely, that's a six. Nailed it. Well, no, you didn't. Likewise, the final cut on an FEOK one key should be a value of one. And if we try that on this one, I mean, you can, you can really see it if I get the right angle. You can see the light coming through practically. That will not work at all. This is actually cut to a zero depth. But to the guy who cut this, right, he looked at it and he said, oh yeah, I need a one, there we go. This is, this is cut to a one, perfect, got it. Let's sell to some other sucker on eBay. This is why sometimes cheap isn't really a bargain. So, you know, even though it looks all fancy with a red head on it and it was the best price out there, just going to some bozo on Amazon or eBay or any place like that, you never know what kind of quality you're getting. And this, I mean, this is garbage. Something like a factory original, which is you can get those from say elevatorkeys.com if you're in the industry. And by, by the industry, I mean you are an installer, uh, you're an AHJ, an authority having jurisdiction, you're somebody who's a first responder with credentials. If you're in the pen testing industry, uh, hooligankeys.com. Again, we're not paid by them, we're just friendly with the, the people behind that site. It's cut by an actual locksmith who knows what the heck they're doing. You're going to get a reputable product that works in the field every time because people who cut it understand the difference between ace locks and fort locks, between Chicago keys, gem keys, and now hopefully you do too. In future videos, maybe we can dissect things like offset tubular, and we'll talk about a lot of, oh, there's a lot more coming because if you wanna make your own copies of a tubular key, well, we're gonna show you tubular key cutting in a future video, and that's a whole other shit show of mis, there's actual products that ship where the device itself has the zero through, through seven Fort Lock gauge, and it ships with a decoder that's one through eight. Good luck with that. Well, there you have it. One more in our tubular lock and tubular key series. We've got more coming. I hope this is a good baseline grounding for your knowledge to understand when we throw out bidding values and cut values, why you have to do things according to the scale you should be using, not just some numbers that you looked up and didn't understand. All right, uh, in, in an homage to not understanding anything, I'm gonna make my brain understand a whole lot less right now. In the meantime, you and everyone else, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you uh, get a better keys in the future. Don't buy crap online from people who are the cheapest one out there. We don't, again, we don't sell keys like this. We just sell knowledge. So thank you again to Red Team Alliance for letting me use the studio. And uh, <laughs> I hope you all like this. And I really, really hope you do not come to expect this kind of quality in future productions of my videos. But, uh, you know, thank you, Drew, for making me look all pretty. Everyone else, cheers. Stay safe out there. Hey, having so much fun in that bomb-ass new studio that uh, I didn't actually do a giveaway. So, yeah, back on the, on the potato phone as usual. But if you would like an FEO K1 uh, and a good one that actually will, will work in everything, um, that's the giveaway this week. You know how this works, right? We, we, you sign up, you're good. And I'll even throw in one of the crappy ones. Just, you know, you can have a comparison. It always helps to have a, a key that doesn't work well. I guess if someone says, hey, you're not supposed to have an FEOK1, you'd be like, well, you know, I don't because this one blows. <laughs>